YouTube audio. Welcome to the 2024 Royal Rumble recap with my buddy Graham Carthorne. Graham, what is going on, buddy? Wrestling historian, I may add. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing good. We're here the morning after the Royal Rumble. We uh, are. Well, first of all, let's kind of put over the viewer choice, guys. Marcus and Tim, we're not available this weekend to do viewer's choice on the Royal Rumble. So Justin and I were, were brainstorming. And we had this wonderful brainstorm of kind of grabbing Graham and jump, having him jump on with us. And Graham, here we are, buddy. Here we are. Um, I really enjoyed the show, top to bottom. I thought, um, you know, over the past 18 months or so, yep. I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I kind of feel like WWE can largely do no wrong. And so while I don't know what's going to happen to the big show, I feel like I'm not going to be let down. The ceiling is high for them. And uh, I think they 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 parred it. You know, this this was a par on that high ceiling. I would say, mm -hmm. no letdowns. Definitely build. No super shopping shocking surprise, but that's okay. I thought this Royal Rumble leading in was built really well, especially both matches. I thought that they presented a bunch of different scenarios with winners, and I think they fulfilled that within a storyline aspect throughout the two matches and uh, the two undercards. Good enough. You know, nothing home run, solid singles, solid doubles, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps pull a few bases in there, uh, high OPI, whatever that is. Um, but overall, I thought it was a pretty solid night. Uh, you Typically, Graham, the viewer choice guys give you a miss, a watch, and a skip. Uh, I think this is a pretty condensed card, even though it was a pretty long night. But I think card-wise, I think we just kind of hammer through it and just get our get our feelings out that way. You cool with that? Sure, I'm sure. I, I will say one thing the attention to detail that they have put not in just the overall product but with matches like the royal rumble you can i feel like there's there's a, an attention to detail that is there that was not there let's say two years ago yeah you know when someone comes out you get a reaction shot from someone specifically in the ring like oh my god um mm -hmm. the and I'm, I'm jumping ahead just a little bit but the women's match the pacing of it was tag team wrestler, wrestler A, wrestler B, tag team wrestlers, tag team partner. There is a lot of that. And so it, it just, yep. it made sense and it made for a very watchable and enjoyable match. Speaking of, you know, start out with Natalia, veteran of that women's roster, glue of the Royal Rumble match. Historically, you want to glue out there. If it's Edge in 05, if it's Gunther last year, just for example, just guys that you can stick out there, keep the match together. And Natty did a perfect job of that. I think this is like her second or third time doing this within the Women's Royal Rumble. And then you had the big surprise right away with Naomi. I thought she got a great reaction. Uh, I could, you could feel the emotion coming out of her body and the, you know, the acceptance, you know, she left. She, she took that chance. She walked out that door and they remembered her. I didn't think they would not remember her, but the acceptance of her and the, you can no pun intended feeling the glow coming out of her body. And, and so I thought about that for a long time. The, the number one and number two, they do obviously put thought into who's going to come out and then who is a natural, like who's going to pop the crowd when they see th this person is number two. So I had a lot of thoughts with the men's match. I had no idea what they were going to do with the women's match because I thought largely the whole match was Becky Naya. Like that's the, the draw. That's where the drama is. They've only announced like four people, five people. For them. So I had no idea who number one and number two might be. So when Nanny comes out, who's been there forever, mm -hmm. but let's face it, she's not really promoted as a top name. I was thinking, how do you follow that up and kind of like wake the crowd up? And I thought the way they did it was great. Yeah, uh, it inserted energy right into that match. And then at number three here, you had Bailey, a potential favorite. And then it's just like, wow, they're just amplifying the energy and putting yep. a whole new circuit in there. And it's like, wow, they, they're, they're cooking with gas right away in this w Women's Royal Rumble. Uh, three trusted women, three veterans of this locker room, three stars, eh, two and a half stars, excuse me, Natty. <laughs> but, but overall, I thought this was a great presentation of the women's roster so far. Yeah, and the, the like I said, the pacing of it was fantastic. They would usually do big name or like very over person, mm -hmm. lesser name, lesser name, lesser name, big name, lesser name, lesser name, big name. Yep. Um, so they didn't they didn't make it top heavy. They didn't make it bottom heavy. I thought the layout of the match was fantastic. 
Yeah, I mean, speaking of tag teams, you had the way or Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell sandwiched between, between a outstanding surprise TNA Women's Champion Jordan Grace. Uh, you heard the murmurs or whatever, but you didn't really anticipate it or sure if it was happened. But instantly in the top five, right away, Jordan Grace fifth. And wow, talking about the glue of the match, she, she surpassed everything, and she was the super glue of the match. I thought she was really strong, she, not really touching all the any of these women before in a, like a real match besides Naomi. She looked impactful. She looked strong. She looked seasoned. I thought she was awesome, and she had a great showing in this Royal Rumble match for 19 minutes, Graham. I thought she was excellent. Yeah, and, and you could tell that the crowd largely knew who she was uh, because when she would have the occasional stare down with someone, the crowd would be up for it. Yeah. Um, so I really like that. You know, they had done it before with Mickey James. So that mm -hmm. door was kind of there, but I really feel like with the, this version of WWE, the Royal rumble could be open to anyone in the industry. Like, I feel like that's the direction we're going. And with Mickey, at least she was a former WWE Correct. women's champion or a former WWE roster champion member Jordan right. Grace has never even sniffed the WWE from a mentioning I think she had a tryout I remember her backstage once as like a security guard or whatever but other than that it, it is not like she's a a well-renowned uh women's wrestler in the world she, yeah I know her because of beyond wrestling and local indies but and I've watched her flourish in TNA the last mm -hmm. few years and, you know she's she's pretty good in like a small circle but for, to the masses out there I thought without really knowing who she is, they did a really good job of pre presenting her and put the TNA brand over strong. And for the people who didn't know her, they know her now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then we kind of got the the uh, the lower card of the Royal Rumble here. You got Asuka. I liked Bailey showing, oh, like a little uh, little nervousness, but, but confidence. Oh, damage. Could, yes, yes. Come that, help me. But that's little, what I was talking about, the, the attention to detail. That they yeah. have now when Oscar comes out, when Kari comes out, and Bailey goes, I did not know that this was the plan. I thought I was going to be the only one in the match. Mm -hmm. Like, you're yeah. not talking to me. So she's su surprised, but oh, a little confident too. Like, but I I'm mostly vulnerable because I think we should get into Bailey at the end, but I think she her character work escalated and evolved within this match, which will probably hopefully lead her to where she needs to be at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. But I, Ivy Nile, Katana Chance, Kyrie Sane, Tegan Knox, Caden Carter, kind of just the undercard of Raw, sandwiched outside of number 10, Bianca Belair. Belair, former winner, probably the 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 workhorse, the the biggest star, the most presented women in the last three, four years on this woman's roster, Bianca Belair. I thought she lived up to it. Not necessarily a favorite coming into this match, but definitely a threat. Very much a threat. And she had some great moments and they also did some great things to tease future mm -hmm. Bianca matches. Yeah. She's kind of like in that, like Jane Cena. <laughs> she's presented up top. Uh, it's not her year. But she's she's definitely going to have a match at WrestleMania. It's going to be presented huge. She's a top star, drop draw for this woman. And Jane Cena slash John Cena <laughs> is always in the mix. <laughs> That's how I look at, at Bianca Belair, Jane Cena right there. That's well, very fair. That's not, a diss. That's not a diss. Right, right. That's very fair. Yeah. And this is where I thought the Royal Rumble got fun with Chelsea Green. Uh, they alluded to her early Royal Rumble elimination two or three years ago, <laughs> coming in, getting thrown out oh, right away. Year. It was just last year. Was it last year? Yeah. Oh, I think she did it twice then. <laughs> I think she did it in uh, 2019 or 20. Yeah, 2019 or 2020. Either one of the big baseball stadiums won where she came right in to get thrown out right away. So they they alluded to that. They They tossed her out. She was saved. She ran back in. Got tossed out. She was saved. I liked the levity that they in inserted right in the smack of the middle of the Royal Rumble, and it really mm -hmm. kind of—I hate to say low key—gave her a little credibility. Because <laughs> I adore Chelsea Green. I think she's fantastic, and I like what they did with her in this Royal Rumble. Absolutely. So Chelsea Green is not presented as one of their top stars, stars, but in her role, she is phenomenal. Absolutely. And I cannot wait until they until they see the faith in her to turn her baby face because mm -hmm. i feel like she could be a huge baby face no argument here i'm a i'm a chelsea green fan club 100 all day every day uh then right 
her tag team partner right after her muscles showed up. The one who's going to save her and present her in this Royal Rebel, help her last 17 minutes in the Royal Rebel, Piper Niven. Uh, she's looking pretty bad. At she's the prelude to the Nia Jax. You know what I mean? She's like kind of like that. But I love mm -hmm. the presentation of her, uh, the, the shine. I love the tag team of them too. And I think they just mesh perfectly. Uh, then you kind of get Zaya, Zelina Vega, Maxine Dupree. And uh, I, I, well, for Dupree, I will say, the much improved Maxine Dupree enters the Royal Rumble. <laughs> botch, botch. <laughs> it was unfortunate, but I like Maxine. I love her fit with the Alpha Academy. And I hope she figures it out because she has a lot of natural charisma and it should, could and should be a star one day. With a fair amount of the audience, they might already say that she's a star. I yeah. Mean, she, she's getting some big reactions for knowing largely nothing. <laughs> so good on her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Zelina Vega, uh, a solid veteran at this point, a very big pop I wanted to put over. I'm not a big video game guy, but I assume that's a video game thing that she or a character of anime or something going on. Costume was beautiful. I'm sure she put a lot of work into it. I wanted to put that over. So when she comes out, I, I made notes because obviously I knew I was going to be on today. So I, when she comes out, I put, what would your custom entrance for the Royal Rumble be? Me? Yes. Uh, if you, I don't know. If, you're, you're coming out for the Rumble. You're not wearing your regular gear. What are you dressed as? What's your cosplay? All right. I'm, well, I'm a plumber, so I'm going to either be a plumber or I'm a football you're coach. Be Super Mario? <laughs> oh, no, I was thinking T.L. Hopper. But um, <laughs> I'll be a football coach, which is the side gig, or a plumber, which is the real gig. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'd, we'll have her on feeling that day. But maybe I'll be – or uh, or maybe I'll just come out of left field and be presented as Ravishing Rick Rude or something like that. Oh, I like what that too. Be, what about okay. you? All over, I'm all over the place there, but that's kind of how, how I'd go. Whatever yeah. my mood is. So uh, I'm a journalist. Uh, okay. So my go-to is always either come out as Peter Parker, but then become Spider-Man just before I get in the ring, or come out as Clark Kent and then become Superman. Okay, okay. I think uh, I think we might have passed over it, but Kyrie Sane was Peter Parker a little bit last night, or Spider-Man with that cool Miss Elimination. Yep. I think we skipped over her. I don't know if we'll get to that, but I wanted to put that over as we got to there. Uh, I think you'd do much better as Spider-Man or Superman than me as a football coach or a plumber. <laughs> no, come out of Super Mario. That'd get a huge pop. Uh, but I, I'd be so light, I'd get eliminated right away. <laughs> All right, Nia Jax, they did a really good job of stacking the ring, uh, presenting her as a super big threat, uh, just presenting her as a top four pick in this Royal Rumble. Uh, and I think she delivered. Uh, we On the preview, we kind of put over Nia Jax as kind of hitting a groove. She's been super focused from a creative standpoint, this purpose from her. And it is what it is, but I think she's living up to the hype. or not, I, I think she's living up to the push that she's getting uh, so far. I think Nia just naturally is such a heat magnet that they're finally learning how to make money off that. Yeah. Um, she's, she's been presented. I mean, this is, this is kind of showing when I started watching wrestling, she's being presented as like 1993 big man Vader. And I love it. She's just <laughs> breaking people and, you know, breaking people's necks, breaking people's shoulders. Uh, she's just, I mean, being able to pin Becky on Raw a few weeks ago when no one yeah. saw that coming was huge. Um, so her performance in this match was amazing. Uh, they did not do with her what I thought they were going to do, which is bring the match down to Becky and Nia, because I thought that's that's where the match was going. Yeah. But for what they did with her, I thought it was perfect. And she, and she lived up to it. I just kind of want to keep putting over her work as uh, she gets a lot of hate and it's natural heat. And they kind of feed into it, at, like like you said. And uh, even though she didn't win, I cannot wait because there's money on the table. I cannot wait for Naya and Rhea one on one. Right. Just give me it somewhere. Perhaps Elimination Chamber in Australia. I think that'd be a pretty good spot for that. That, we'll see. that would, especially with Rhea. Rhea would be such a mega baby face. That would work. If they're ready to go with three in that spot, I think that's a great transition there. Hometown. Well, not, 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 like, not full term baby face, but for that crowd, full baby face. For sure. Both in she'll be coming out of a as such a bigger star coming out of that. And Nia Jax would kind of feed into that and kind of help her get there. Yep. We had Shotzi come out here. Cool tank, cool look. Um, but once she enters the ring, <laughs> she's a kind of a, a little bit of a wild card there. But I but overall I like Shotzi. Um and then Becky Lynch, 21. 
t- another favorite here in the Royal Rumble, massive pop. Mega star. Uh, mega star, presented as a mega star. Doesn't necessarily have to do much to get that reaction, but she's earned this status in this. Um, and I think that pop was excellent. I thought, mm-hmm. And I thought that her presence and her star power really lived up to it. And we felt that the, the biggest threats in the Royal Rumble were now in there with her, Bailey, and Nia Jax. So and so I was texting a couple buddies of mine. Becky was out. And Nia was out. You know, a lot of these other big names were still in the match. And I go, this this pacing, we're, we're getting set up for a big surprise at 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and we'll get to that. And I like how they did that. I'm sitting next to Chad. We're kind of like, all right, this is who left. This is who left. And when we had Isla Dawn come out, we are like, all right, Isla Dawn, she's not in the Rumble. They had the, the crime time spot or they had the, the token tag team spot where it's like, hey, we only have one slot for the tag team. They flipped, They didn't flip a coin. Alba Fire got the spot there. Uh, Kayla Ray, a very reputable UK wrestler, has done great thing in NXT UK, great things in NXT. She's kind of, I don't want to say stuck in this tag team here, but if they go with her ever, she's ready to rock and roll, I think, for sure. I'm just going to kind of want to put her over as we pass through here. Uh, Shayna Baszler, and then... I actually totally enjoyed this spot here in the Royal Rumble at number 24. As we see our truth come out here. Um, I kind of, I, I adore him. I love the levity of it. Uh, I, I love the 2016 spot where he did the money in the bank spot. I love where Nia Jax took him out in 30 after he won the Mixed Max Challenge. I just love the confused, but like, I don't know, it's harmless. And I love, I thought it was a perfect time to, you know, insert more levity into this Royal Rumble before we hunker down at the end. And uh, I, don't, I just enjoyed it. I I enjoyed it too. Uh, but I also thought it was hilarious that they saved this spot for Valhalla. <laughs> because apparently they have no faith in her having having any kind of shine whatsoever. So she comes out. He, he gets all the camera time while she's out there. And even while he's being forced away, she gets eliminated. Yeah, it, it, well, if you think about it, right, it, she's kind of the least over. <laughs> Very much so. No, that, it works. It works. It works. And so it's like, oh, Valhalla is just like, all right, let me, you know, I'll text my buddy or I'll talk to the guy next to me or I'll watch the ring. I don't need to watch Valhalla come out. Right. And then you hear the what's up. And you're like, oh, what's going on here? And, you, and then he just kind of runs out confused, gets to the ring. Where are all the men? <laughs> and they get pierced. Uh, I thought it was the time was perfect and I and I really dug it. And and then I wrote down Monday Night Raw, Ivar versus R Truth. Oh, perfect. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> or something. It, it will transition into something. And uh, I like what they're doing with R Truth on Monday Night Raw. Absolutely. He got, it's three hours is hard, but h- inserting him in, in a few segments, a few backstage stuff, it just helps the night go on. Yes, it does. And then we had some solid workers here. Uh Michin, Mia Yim, and Zoe Stark. All right. It's picking up. Both enter the ring. The strikes are great. The exchanges are great. Off the levity, we're adding some real toughness and grit into this Royal Rumble. I thought that these two right after that was laid out perfectly. Then we had Roxanne Perez. Unfortunately, they spoiled Roxanne Perez in the pre-show package where they showed people looking at the Royal Rumble ring and they had the Roxanne Perez vignette behind them on the screen. So it's like, all right, well, we know Roxanne's coming out. So we have we have, we haven't had any NXT superstars yet, but here we know Roxanne's in this. So he, coming her coming out first was kind of right, but she got a good pop. And again, adding grit, adding work, action to this Rumble. She's perfect right after Zoe and Michin here. I just wanted to chime in uh, two things that were different about uh, the Royal Rumble pre- presentation that I had not seen before. One, for the people who had been in the match the longest, you mm-hmm. would occasionally get their time presented on the screen, which I loved. Yes. You know, right. Like um, yes. Naomi has been in for 50 minutes and then mm-hmm. you're like the, the top four right now. I love that. They should always do that. Yeah. Two, from a business standpoint, from a sponsorship standpoint, did you notice the countdown clock is now sponsored? Yeah, C4. Perfect. And it did not distract from the show. It wasn't something stupid like there's, you know, Domino's is sponsoring and someone gets into a pizza fight backstage or, you know, like we're, we're pretending that we eat pizza all the time, even though we have, you know, 1% body fat. It didn't distract from the show at all. It's just extra money for the company. It's very smart. Uh, to the C4, it was a can. <laughs> and then, like, the can would, you know, 
ignite or whatever, and then yeah. the number would pres- and then the num- the countdown would present itself. It would unignite, and then it would have number seven. You know, what I mean, it was really cool. It was really well done. Uh, and then here at twenty eight, Jade Cargill, the big surprise. I love that they did the big surprise at twenty eight. You know, what I mean, I thought the presentation was great. I think she looked like a million dollars. And when she entered that ring, you're like, what are we gonna get? You know, it's been since October since they signed her. Uh, mm-hmm. And then she went away. She was presented on TV. She has that big star feel, but she's been grinding in the PC, so to speak. Let's see what she looks like. She enters the ring, and she's clean. She's crisp. And it was really interesting. As soon as she comes out, I think even before she turned around, that crowd exploded. Yeah. Like, I was watching it thinking, who is this massive new star that they signed from AEW or Japan or something like that, mm-hmm. that I've not been paying attention to. And it's, Oh, it's Jade. I didn't know all these people knew her that well. I didn't know all these people cared about her as much as they do. Mm-hmm. Um, really amazing. Also kind of, uh, I personally was surprised that they put her in it uh, because knowing that they were going to put so much thought in her, into her presentation I thought that if you do a debut at the Rumble, you know, it unless you're going to win, someone's mm-hmm. going to toss you out. So why put why put them in that position? Save them for like a singles match where they're just absolutely dominant. She didn't win. However, she was presented so well mm-hmm. that I, I've got no argument. Like my my whole mindset was wrong. They they know how they're doing this way better than I do. It was a risk for her not to win, but. At the end of the day, it wasn't. Um, she well, it was she, kind of a risk for her to win too, because yeah. she's kind of very untested. Yeah, could she carry WrestleMania? I don't think so. Perhaps maybe we can get get to it at the end there. Maybe a little what we think was happening, but uh, I think she'll be on the card. But we'll see. Uh, right after her, the second NXT, Tiffany Stratton. I think she's the future of that division. The gimmick is strong, but it's, she's starting to shed it in a good way. Tiffany was that poppy, young daddy's girl, right? But she's starting to shed that, and she's starting to be Tiffany Stratton. So that's all. That's what NXT is about. Let's figure out this character. Let's put her in the different scenarios. And now we present her with all the stars of the women's division. It felt like she fit like a glove. She's ready. And Tiffany Stratton is the future of this division. Yeah, it, I don't think it'll be long before she's on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, I think she's, it's warranted at this point. And at 30, we knew we were going to get a surprise. We just weren't sure where we we're going to go. We like in the back of the head, we got Sasha Banks, but I don't I don't think so, but hey, you never know, right? You never know this th- this has been paced really well. But then you kind of had that double of a surprise, the returning Liv Morgan. But I think Liv looked great. I think she was presented great. And um I curious with this heavy roster at the top what they do with her come WrestleMania. I don't have a clue because she's not in, of course I'm not running the show, but she's yeah. not in my plans. Yeah. So say, say we'll get a little wild, right? Let's, 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 let's get a little wild, right? Let's get a little loose. We, I think it's D- Bailey goes on to win this match. We'll get to the finish in a second. Let's take Let's, let's veer real quick away. Right. You on the SmackDown side, you have Bailey and EO sky, but I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure that's safe. Yeah. And then you have Jade Cargill as a wild card, but on SmackDown, you also have Bianca Belair. You had, they had a really nice stare down there. She, Jay Cargill ha, was presented against Nia Jax, and that would be a perfect landing spot for her if the play, if the Nia Jax plan, they're building her up for something. If it's not Rhea, it could be Jade. And then, so you have Jade Cargill as a wild card. You mentioned Bianca Belair. You mentioned Nia Jax. You have mm-hmm. Rhea Ripley on the Raw side as your women's champion. You present. You would think you're gonna get Becky Lynch. But could they save that for SummerSlam, WrestleMania 41? That's a home run of a match, but I'm not necessarily sure if that has to happen right now. So let me let me throw Becky Lynch's name into the Jay Cargill sweeps. Right? You want Jay Cargill to continue to look and feel like a star and look good in ring? Becky Lynch is that answer with Jay Cargill. So what, what would he do with Rhea Ripley? Liv Morgan. Plucky underdog, second in the Royal Rumble. How many times when the world of two world champions with a runner up in the Royal Rumble goes on to face the other world champion? I'm sure we'll talk about that later with with the raw side of things. So th- there's a lot of different matches. I think we're going to get a tag match at WrestleMania, of course, multi-women. But I would love for them to present a Raw match, 
a SmackDown match outside of the Raw title, SmackDown title. I thought I think this is the perfect year. I think there's enough stars with Bianca on the side, with with Nia, with Becky on the side, perhaps with Jay. We don't know what brand she's going to. And all that being said, with Charlotte hurt too. I think I really this is the year, um, and I don't think it would blow up the card. This is the year that they present five total women's matches with with the women and don't go mix. You can go singles with the tag match where you throw the rest of the card in all those names I talked about earlier. Don't need to be thrown into a battle Royal or need to be thrown into a tag match. I think this is the year that they built up all these women to go home, to go kind of out there and really deliver on the main roster card in a WrestleMania opposed to just, all right, well we have our slots and who fits them and you guys are the rest of there. Mm -hmm. So for months I had it, Pretty much in cement in my head, it's Becky and Rhea. Yeah, and it's, still the right, it's still the right pick, though. By the way, right? And you know, I didn't know on the SmackDown side because I honestly didn't think EO was a strong enough champion to make it to WrestleMania. But considering mm -hmm. Bailey as her challenger in the history there, that absolutely makes sense. Of course, after after last night, I'm all for it. I like Jade and Nia. I like that really? idea a lot. Initially, I was thinking. Jade's not even in the WrestleMania plan. And then you you debut her officially the day after. So, like, mm -hmm. hypothetically, yep, yep. it's Rhea and Becky. Rhea goes over. She comes out on Raw. She was, she's the biggest megastar this division's ever had. I beat her. There's no one else. And then you hit Jade's music. And the crowd goes, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. But in lieu of that, I love Jade and Nia on paper. That's a great attraction. Even even on the SmackDown side, Jade and B B and Bianca. If you want to do that, yeah. that's that that looks awesome. I would place. just I would be afraid to beat either of them. True, true. that's the only yeah. thing. But but the, you you have Bel Air on that on that outside looking in now with Bailey winning. You mm -hmm. could fill it with Jade. Char I um, I presume the plans were Charlotte. Now that's kind of out the window. Perhaps you maybe insert Tiffany, the other blonde, the other, you know what I mean? So I think that either way, I, give me five total matches at WrestleMania, including the tag match for the women. I think it's warranted. I think they're over enough, and I think they, they, they deserve it. Main takeaway, they have so many great problems to solve. These are great problems. They have so much talent. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of the talent here, as we put a bow on the women's Royal Rumble match here, Bailey wins, last eliminating Liv Morgan. I really love the apron stuff with Morgan and Jade here. I thought it was really good. And historically, you're a historian. When you look back on this Royal Rumble, you're going to see that Tiffany Stratton was in the Final Four. I like that. I I, I kind of like how she was historically is in the Brian Knob spot of like, wow, she made a Final Four. But hopefully it's not a Brian Knob spot. And, 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 and it makes sense with her star power and stuff moving forward here. I will say, Becky Lynch, 22, 22 minutes. 29 seconds, one elimination. And she was sixth to last in the Royal Rumble. A little surprising, so to speak, maybe. But I think she, she still had a, you know, an aura and a star power. But it clearly wasn't about her. I think that when she... Let's take a quick sidebar on Becky here. When she presented herself to Rhea a week or so ago on Raw, she has to have some... She's going to go through some stuff mentally pre to prepare herself for this Royal Rumble. That's why I thought in the back of my head she wasn't going to win. She needs to go through stuff, st stuff mentally to kind of get ready for Rhea. Um, she needs to be vulnerable. She needs to learn to grow. She needs to gain that confidence of the man again to present the real man now, Maria Ripley. So I like that they eliminated her in the bottom six opposed to – it was a little surprising too. He was like, oh, wow, Becky's out. And with Naomi eliminating her too, I don't think there's any real substance between the two, but I think it's a nice feather on the cap of the Naomi run to kind of eliminate Becky Lynch too. But I love that Becky, it's not about her. She's she's pretty selfless. You know, if you look at her, what she does when she's not involved in the title picture, um, she's constantly moving around, going down to NXT, working with all, all making these other stars, making others, exactly making other stars. So um, her time will come and she's, she's so aware enough to know that it's not about her this night, but it added to her road to Rhea Ripley, which it could be WrestleMania, should be WrestleMania. But overall, I think Becky had a strong performance despite the numbers. I think, I think Becky's night comes at elimination chamber. I think that's when he, she gets her groove back. Yep. Just like Stella. Yep. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that, that was it. I love, I love the Tiffany Stratton stop. 
I love Naomi stuff at the end. The final six was strong. And then the apron stuff was, was super, super suspenseful. Um, once Jade went out, you're like, all right, it should be Bailey. So I think they did a really good job of the bang, bang eliminations. They did a really good job of presenting the six girls eliminate or the five girls eliminating, staring at Bailey with frustration, let down, and just really just exhaustion. Oh, interesting number. Six. How many people go in an elimination chamber? Six. There we go. There we go. That might be the six. So overall, I think when we look back on this Women's Royal Rumble, um, of course, it was a little sloppy at time with some of the girls with the work, right? But that's expected. Like, I'm not going to hamper in, or really alter my thoughts in this match. I thought this was a very good Royal Rumble match. I think when we look back on it in a few years, once we let it breathe, it could be a top contender for one of the better Women's Royal Rumbles well, of I think all time. it's absolutely the best. Absolutely um, the best. They did not have to rely on so many years. They've had to rely on random too. diva from 2005 or Michelle McCool or, you know, best Phoenix. All these people have no chance of winning. They might, they yeah. might get like one spot and then they're thrown out. These are all current stars. They brought in one outside big name. They had a big debut and they made a lot of these moments impactful. I feel like that's one thing that WWE's getting gotten better about is that what they're doing, maybe they scale back, maybe they don't do as much, but what they do means more. Absolutely. And they just the depth of star power, even from the top all the way down to the middle of the card, is strong. You see girl, you keep you continue to see girls ascend, girls work from the bottom, like Maxine Dupree even worked their way up. So overall, they got their pulse on this woman's division. And this rumble really was the personification of that. Mm-hmm. All right, and then next here, let's let's alter to the WWE Universal Championship match here. Let's kind of just touch on it a little bit. Um, on a Roman Reigns level scale of matches, it didn't really necessarily reach that peaks. Um, a lot of fluff in between, um, but overall, I thought the work was pretty good. Uh, I I really liked the ending. Uh, I liked. I think LA Knight looked specifically well in this match i felt like he fit pretty good i thought his transitions of what it was his turn up weren't really clunky and and sometimes honestly it that's kind of his flaw where like when he would transition from a defense or transition from selling to powering up he seems to seems to feel like he low-key has two left feet at times but overall i think he's really catching his footing as he extends up to the main event level uh i think he needs to kind of Kind of be presented in that U.S. title scene for a while before he re-enters the the world title, but I can see him being that B champion one day, that that world heavyweight champion. Um, but oh, even overall, overall for LA Knight, I think this was was a win for him. We'll kind of each touch on each guy as we work our way through the match. I completely agree, and it was pretty amazing that you've got someone like Orton who's been gone for so long. He comes out, but then. Big, big reaction. Yep. But then LA Knight comes out at the end, and it's like, that's the star. That's our guy. Yep. And you said US, U.S. title scene. I think since Logan Paul won the title, I kind of had it in my mind that it's yep. Logan Paul and LA Knight at WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, AJ Styles, the, the lesser star here, but... I like how he's transitioning to whatever that is next. Uh, he's getting some grit and some edge. He's getting some dirt behind his fingernails as a character here. Uh, I think he's transitioning fully to the dark side, so to speak. Uh, the stuff he's doing with Gallows and Anderson and Meechin leaving in have kind of been a little dark, and he's not really in that deep place. Uh, Malik Kelly, uh, famous TikToker, did a preview with me in this match, and, and Malik put over his TNA run back in the day where he kind of transitioned to the dark side. I, th- I believe that's what they're going to tr- end up doing here. So him taking the pinfall loss here, but I think that overall in this match, AJ added a bunch of spunk. Uh, he was kind of the bump guy here, uh, especially with the finish. I thought that top rope move with where LA Knight got transitioned out of the counter with Roman Reigns, hit the hit the mat. I think AJ looked awesome here. Not to finish to the end, but overall, as we kind of talk about AJ in this match, I think we had a pretty good performance, but I think that he is not fully connecting as this character. 
to the fans. So I think he he's continues to transition here, but that tra- transition continues. But he's overall in a good place going forward. Speaking of transition, don't you feel like uh, AJ is slowly morphing into uh, Escape from New York? He's got the leather jacket. He just needs the eye patch. He's got the long hair. He's got the scruff. I just feel like he's he's becoming Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell, uh, handsome man like Kurt. I can uh, I could see that, right? Like, if, it's, if, if the jacket fits, not the glove, if, right? Kurt Kurt Russell in post apocalyptic America. <laughs> but either way, if you if you told me this was AJ Styles' last opportunity at the big belt, not the B belt, but the big belt, I'd probably believe you. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, and that's not a slight on him. I think the, he'll find his footing on this card and be presented as a star and do totally fine. But speaking of star, uh, Randy Orton, I can kind of see why they didn't go with Orton and Reigns now. At the end of the day, um, they kind of wanted to give that boost to LA Knight right before they push him into the mid card title. Uh, they wanted to kind of transition AJ Styles as a character back into TV, and they—I don't think they wanted to give away Rones, uh, Reigns, and Orton, so to speak. But I don't think they wanted to beat Orton. I agree. I agree. Um, so t- late in the match, uh, we had the solo interference. Yeah. And he, he comes out and cost Randy a spot. And I thought, ooh, that's where we're going. Makes sense. It does make sense. I don't know if I'm not necessarily a huge solo Sokoa fan, but in the, on that SmackDown brand for Randy Orton at WrestleMania 40, solo Sokoa makes sense. And I'm sure it'd be totally fine. And and also think about it, you've got Cody and Roman. You've got Randy and Solo. It's like their seconds, right? Like yep. the, the supporting cast. Uh, Solo took out John Cena, who came up with Randy Orton, both you know very similar in so many ways, their careers. Uh, and then after that, you know, let's say a solo hypothetically wins, right? Sets up solo and Cody. It also hypothetically, sets up, which I think would be some phenomenal television for as long as they want to do it, heal Randy and Cody. Yep. Yep. Present. I got your back. Now that you want it, I want your belt. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's a viper. Yeah. Out of nowhere. Yep. He's a viper, of course. So, yeah. Really good stuff. Strong stuff there. And then let's talk about the big dog, Roman. Now, you're a historian. We put that over early on here. Mm-hmm. And this is a historical reign. What are your what's your overall thoughts on this title reign and Roman Reigns? Phenomenal. Uh, I would not have said that. Maybe within it's like the longer it goes, the more fun it becomes. Mm-hmm. And early on, you're expecting him to drop it after six three months six months, nine months, because that's what they do, right? Yep. They drop titles to Think boost well. TV ratings, you know, to get a quick pop. But the, like I said, the attention to detail, they put him with with Heyman, and then how many months is it before Jay is in the picture? Or like just a few months and Jay is in the picture, but then how many months before Jimmy's in the picture? And then how many months before Solo is in the picture? So it feels like as soon as you get tired or as soon as it, you, you know something has run its course, they add another chapter mm-hmm. or they add another side person to add, you know, to just change everything. It's, we it's all very expect- in the 80s. I went to L.A. last year to see Cody Rhodes win the title. Oh, we all expected it to happen. And walking out of the building, I was even thinking, well, the, he's got to drop it on Raw tomorrow because that <laughs> never happens. But hes it's got to happen. It's got to happen. But what they have done with this is they've made him the guy that we all are waiting every match to see him drop the title. And somehow or another, whether, whether it's in, you know, Drew McIntyre overseas or L.A. Knight or, you know, somehow – he survives. Sami Zayn in Toronto, in uh, Montreal. In Montreal. It's it's very much like an '80s Ric Flair situation. Mm-hmm. He's got his own horsemen around him, but he's also very capable. Yes, you know he's like a 300 pound monster, 
but he'll also low blow you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'll the, cheat. You know, whatever he needs to do, he's a heel. <laughs> the, the interference doesn't bother me. <laughs> it's it, 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 it all works. It all it works. works. It fucking works. It's, yes. it's, a, it's a part of the presentation. It's a part of the aura. It's a part of the obstacles. And this, every time he goes out there, all that included feels like such a big fight. It feels like such a big moment. And it, to me, I know to some are sick of it, but to me, it just feels like history. And I appreciate that part of it. You know what I mean? Even though Roman Reigns was winning last night, there was not much suspense. That's why this was a three and a quarter star match. You know what I mean? The action was good. Sure. The work was good. It was built well. It was fu- it was good enough. Um, maybe the solo stuff, but no, there was no real suspense. Right, right. So, but he has had suspense. This just wasn't on that par of Roman Reigns suspenses, as we talked about, the bar being so high. But overall, that high bar still interests me. I'm still invested. He feels like a star. Like even let me just throw some numbers at you. 2.5 million views on SmackDown every episode that he's on. That's game changing. That's why they went to USA and broke and got the deal that they did. You know, he he is the representation of why Netflix is going to pay $5 billion over 10 years for the WWE. He is, I don't want to say it's all because of him, but the potential of someone living up to his stature in his title because he set the bar so high for the next guy to kind of live up to it. So back to what you were saying earlier about the ping pong, that shit's over. The bar is now set high again. And it'll be real interesting once he drops that title because he can't hold it forever. If, if (laughs) he can't hold it forever, but that next person, let's assume it's Cody. That next person will, He's probably going to defend it more than oh, he's going to be four times a year, right? So the whole landscape is going to change. Guys mm-hmm. who who to this point would never have a sh- a shot at, at challenging Roman, Cody could be right at fighting them on SmackDown every week. It's going to be interesting. It's he, he's setting up the next the next guy very well. This is kind of like the under. It's it's almost to the point where. Roman's title reigns is the Undertaker streak in a way. You know yes. what I mean? From, from an aura standpoint, from from yes. a stature standpoint. So and from a money making standpoint, it's way bigger. Yeah. Abs- absolutely. Now, real quick, historian, I have a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. Bruno San Martino has the record of the longest title reign. I, I, yes. I we're not going to see that. But when people say Hulk Hogan's record, it's not a record; it's a milestone. Do you find that important? The length of the title run? Yes, like passing 1,400 in what on days, whatever September is. I know Hulk Hogan doesn't hold a record, but Hulk Hogan holds a milestone of the second longest reigning or the third longest reigning WWF champion of all time. But in the WrestleMania era, that is the record for the title reign. Do you think there's any importance from a historical standpoint for Hulk Hogan's 1,400 and whatever days? Do I for think Roman's Roman going to break it? For Roman Ro- Reigns to approach Hogan's um, timetable. Oh, no, we don't need to do that. Okay. Uh, that, from I, a historical standpoint. I was just, like, what's the point? Like, uh, suddenly, are we going to care more? Are they going to make so much more at the, at the stock market? Like, I don't, it's just whatever. It's the biggest le- reign since the WrestleMania history. The WrestleMania is the biggest draw. I... I see. It's not a. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to present it as a record. It's more mm-hmm. of a milestone because Bruno mm-hmm. has the record, like I just said. Right. I can see when you look back on this Roman Reigns era, passing Hulkamania for the longest title reign ever. There could be a little squeeze to that juice, but that's for that's for another day. I just wanted your historical opinion on it. I I would not like to see that broken. Okay. As a Hogan fan, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I as an '80s fan, as a fan of history, you know, I I, I agree. I I I, 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 tr- I think your sentiment is true. I but feel like it's the last time they'll ever be this close. Perhaps, you know, they. I was kind of surprised. I figured they would they would have some involvement of Hogan last night because you know the 40th it's anniversary just, was a few days yeah. ago, that kind of thing. Yeah. But to have him open, you know, the show with the you know. The video, the prepackaged video, and all that kind of stuff—that was really cool. I could see now. 
I want Roman to drop it in Mania. Mm-hmm. But if he does not, if he if he keeps going, um, I could see them involving the Hogan record and having that challenger step in and go, not only am I going to beat you for your belt, but I'm going to keep his record intact or his milestone intact. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't hate that. And in 40 being a number that's so like, uh, milestone ish Hogan's milestone. I can see that working like kind of peanut butter and jelly. In a mm-hmm. way. I dig that idea. Well, well, I just want your overall thoughts. This is more about, it wasn't necessarily about the match. It was more of a kind of a blimp on the road to WrestleMania. Uh, right. So, but overall, good enough three and a quarter stars for me. <laughs> it did what it needed to do. Yep. Um, let's kind of just breeze on this one quick. I perceive Logan Paul in KO the, due to the result is kind of le- may, perhaps leading to a s- match at the elimination chain. And that's where you kind of get that work rate match between these two guys. Cause they showed flashes of going out there, having a really strong match and delivering well, but the finish was clunky, but I, I, I like the finish, but on paper, I, I like the have finish. Qualification, it's kind of unsatisfying in a way. Well, I mean, think about who these guys are. Logan Paul, cheats literally every match he's in and he's not in too many matches so for him to win that way feeds into who he is and also for him to win that way he's not beating kevin he's not pinning kevin so i thought it did well by both of them and it's true to kevin's character too where he's not afraid to take an edge either you know what i mean it's like I'm going right. to outsmart you, and this is this is a part of my DNA. It just works. So it could perhaps lead to a stipulation match. No that's DQ. Will, that will probably protect Kevin Owens at Elimination Chamber, but I, I think that there's enough juice in this feud to continue it to then. Yeah, I completely agree. And then I'm curious where Kevin Owens falls on a WrestleMania landscape, so we'll see about that. Well, just real quick, you know, talking about the two the two title matches in here, isn't it interesting that you go from this really amazing, solid women's rumble match, and then, if anything, the the piss break <laughs> is the Roman match. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I, 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 I thought the U.S. title match was going to go on second. It just it feels like a very second match on the card match. I, I could see um, maybe one at the distance, distance Roman and Cody. Oh, yeah, maybe. that's fair. You know something? Tropicana, that elevator ride to the suite is a long ride, so they wanted to get Roman in and out and and get him up there. That, that I think we got our answer right there, Graham. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's jump on the men's rumble as we get out of here. I love the axe and smash spot, even though they're not a quote unquote tag team, but uh, these guys are clearly clearly building up to a match at WrestleMania, and I loved it. Uh, I think Jay, I love Jay coming out one, felt like a star because his he's extending him working around Roman in the Bloodline really, and I love what they've done with him on Raw. I don't think he, I think his brighter days are ahead of him, of course, Mm -hmm. but I love that they presented him at number one and then they didn't really even hint to it, but they hinted to it on SmackDown where he's just like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. So I I, I love, I love that. So going back to, I was, I was thinking about, I had no idea who'd be one and two for the women's match for one and two on the men's match for probably, I don't know, a few months. Yeah. Number one, Cody. Oh, number number two because I didn't think he would win. I thought oh. he would be the Iron Man. I thought he would be there at like the final three, final four. But I did not think he would win. Also, he came out of thirty last year, so to go from thirty to one is not unprecedented. So Cody number one, and there's always a pattern, right? They always bring out someone with history. So you have Cody come out and they go, "Oh my God, how's he going to do this? You know, his WrestleMania dream. How's he going to finish the story? Coming as number one." And then number two, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Could have been and then they go, well, it, this is not happening. But still, he makes it all the way to the end. That would have pissed off a lot of people, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was like this was like months ago. Um, yeah, yeah, Jimmy yeah. J, what did make my short list, I honestly did not think that Jimmy had the star power yet to be in that spot as one and two. Jimmy's unique. What are they going to do with it? I think Jimmy has natural charisma. I think he kind of leveled off in the mid card. He, but he was kind of even in the bloodline with the Usos. He was kind of the one taking the L's. He was kind of the one 
goofy. He was the one doing the handshakes with Sammy. He was kind of transitioning. He was kind of the one that was aloof, in, you know, so mm-hmm. to speak, a little bit. Where Jay was, he had that inner, inner, inner hate, that inner edge. You know what I mean? So it makes sense. But I think Jake, I think they will present Jimmy to get him there for for the match at WrestleMania. But overall, I thought it was great, and I love, I love the stare down. I, I wish it got a little better reaction, but overall, I thought it worked totally fine. Grayson Waller number three does a little talk show out to the ring. It worked. It's whatever. It's a, it, it's not his time, but it's continue. It's presenting his character pro- to probably the biggest stage that, that they've had in a while. So I thought it worked. Uh, Andrade, unaffiliated. He's back. I thought this was a really good spot for him. I thought the crowd reacted well. I love that he had his AEW look with the mask because we never seen that in the WWE with the mask and the robe and like the, kind of the heritage thing. And but due to the you know the due to the Mexican heritage, where is he going to lie in the LWO? Legato, we'll find out. So I think that it was a good representation to him back to the main roster. And uh, I'm curious where he kind of lands. It was pretty interesting, you know, going back to the women's match, the pacing, right? Yes. Big star, lesser, lesser, big star, lesser, lesser. Look at the pacing for the men's match. Completely (laughs) different. (laughs) The pacing makes sense, I think, at the end of the day. It makes sense, but... They didn't, have, they didn't have like your big name in the top five, right? Or the top yeah. 10. Um, and it was pretty interesting that a lot of the LWO types, yeah, like the Carlito, Santos, Andre, like all these guys are like basically one after the other. So the, yep. the first third of the match is just an LWO and they, fight. And then they used Dom to transition out of the LWO in a way yeah. too. But, but then we had... Just like Waller, we had uh, Carmelo Hayes, Massachusetts' own re- represent uh, Nakamura, Santos, kind of to the LWO theme, carrying mm-hmm. Cross into Dom at number nine. What do you, you know, decent upper mid card talent there. I wouldn't necessarily say there's not much of a star there. Maybe Cross isn't much of a star, but he feels like a star with his new you know group out there. So good, good mix. So like you said, a third way into the Royal Rumble. Uh, Carlito Lashley. I felt this. I thought this was the 2006 Royal Rumble, but we're good. We're good. <laughs> this is when we start getting into the guys who are barely in the match. Yeah, it's like we're 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 moving feuds along early in this Royal Rumble. If it's you know the Waller and, and Hayes feud, you got the LWO feud with Legato and Santos, and then you have the Cross and Bobby Lashley feud. And I like what you know, just to kind of put a bow on that early third. I like what they did with Lashley, made him come in, look awesome, and then get kind of out quick. Cross kind of out quick. Mm-hmm. Insert the Street Profits. Insert AOP. I did like that. Have, a, like have that. a walking brawl. Yeah, I did like when that. Back, when you go back and watch this Royal Rumble in years, you're like, oh, they had a feud. <laughs> I I like the you know getting the outside guys in the big fight around ringside. I like that a lot. What I don't like is the Rumbles where you could count on more than one hand how many guys are in there for less than than a minute. Yeah. And we, we were kind of getting into that vibe a little bit there. Yeah. For, for, but for, yeah, not, not necessarily a minute, but more like five, six, seven, eight minutes. Yeah. So, and they, then Pat they, McAfee, like it just, you know, really. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. We're not That's trying, the, are we? Yeah. But pretty much what happens here with the early third, Dom and Jay Uso kind of survive. Andrade hangs around, but he's kind of kind of forgotten about a little bit he you know in, in there for 22 minutes but it's a good presentation it was more about the entrance but mm-hmm. the work was good he had a good a few shine spots carlito you know eliminated santos but was really only only in the royal rumble for two and a half minutes bobby lashley a minute and a half so yeah like you said ping pong in out thank you see you later and then we got ludwig theory finn leading up to cody at 15 i like what they did with ludwig had him come in look good but Get him out right before we get to Gunther. Uh, yep. Austin Theory, future. I'm around these parts. I'm kind of his only fan, but he's kind of in a tag team with with Waller right now. But he came in, looked good, whatever. And then Finn really transitioned Dom out of the LWO stuff 
had a few impactful spots, but then helped Dom transition towards the end of the match. So I liked how, kind of how they used those three guys too. But then we had a Royal Rumble pool at JT's house. And your boy had number 15. And then when Cody came out at number 15, I said, oh, yeah, I got, I, I got one of the favorites. But I kind of want Punk to win still. <laughs> you know, you wanted Cody first, but I think 15 ended up being the smart pick. If they put him at the bottom end again, they couldn't do that. But they let the they let the star, they let the kind of story develop, get their stuff, their shit in in the Rumble. But Cody being the first star in the match was awesome. I would not have waited till 15. Yeah, I – and also, I think it it uh, benefits him more if he's in there, if he's just punished, right? Yes. If he's just beaten. Like, when we think about um, the really great Rumble wins, it's the guy who seemingly has no chance. It's, you know, Flair was a heel, but Flair, uh, the Benoit win in 04, it's the Rey Mysterio win. It's really like, oh, he, oh my gosh, not only is he still in the match, he might actually win. HBK, yeah. Not even. Right, HBK. I just, I love that spot. And yeah. I also feel like if they had him earlier, if they had up the star power earlier, they wouldn't have had these lulls. That's yeah. I, th th this match did kind of. Definitely had his lulls, but it was kind of like it was altering. You know, it was kind of altering. Around. They were in second gear. They didn't. Yeah. They, they were struggling to shift the clutch down at times. But overall, I think they maintained that second gear throughout the match uh, because there's so much depth within the star power. You just don't have the big stars. But with the depth of the star power, the big stars feel like big stars. And Cody being that big star was pretty needed at this time of the Rumble, of course. Agreed. Uh, then, Bronson, then Bronson Reed and Kofi Kingston. Uh, I like what they did with Kofi. He's he's got that match with Gunther coming up. They, Imperium and New Day have that feud, so he go he heads right to Ludwig and he gets after him and he eliminates him. And then we kind of talked about Ludwig and Gunther as we get into that. And then Bronson Reed, big threat. Um, perhaps if Seth didn't get hurt, he could have had that Seth match here, as they maybe hinted to that. So they, they stuck him in the middle of the Rumble, presented him fine. Reed's whatever to me. I think he'd be a really good tag guy before he kind of re-enters himself into the main event scene. I'm afraid that he kind of gets lost in the shuffle where he's perhaps not as good as the Gunthers of the world. And they, even like an Ivar, an extending tag guy, kind of steals his shine as that yeah. big, big beefy guy. So overall, Reed's fun. I just kind of think he needs to catch his footing in a tag. I'm not sure what or how, but I that's like just that. kind of like my idea. overall thought on him. Uh, but then we got Gunther at 18. I like how Gunther came in a few spots after Cody because uh, because now he's the next favorite or presented as mm -hmm. a top-tier favorite here. And, of course, they had the history last year with Cody and Gunther with that awesome final two spot there. So I love how Gunther – Ludwig, what are, you, what are you doing? So, But now I'm on my own, and I'm, I'm Gunther. I'm going to prove that I'm on my own, and I'm capable of winning this match on my own. <laughs> and so also I, he's, I, I like he's the switch for that. He's rested, whereas last year he came in at, you know, the first one in there. Now he's more than halfway through. Of course he's going to win. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had Ivar. I love how he's uh, on his little ascend, as we're talking about here. Stick him in the rumble for five minutes or so, and it's just going to only add to his aura and ascend. I'm looking forward to a Gunther Ivar IC title match down the road somewhere in between here and WrestleMania, of course. And uh, I think that's going to just be awesome Monday that night. Would be yeah, I think that's awesome. Uh, and then at number 20, Breaker. I think Breaker, I assume Breaker was going to be in the Rumble, but I perhaps maybe with a reshuffling of Brock, I, percent, I assume he maybe got the Brock spot or they added on to his stuff. But I like how they added him at 20. You know, 20 is kind of a round number of where towards the end. 20 is a transition into the favorites. You know, if you, if you think of 90, 92 or, uh, with Hulk, in 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 Taker getting twenty and up because they wanted to get favorites, so I like how they presented a uh, Breaker here from NXT, and he just really came in and just looked awesome. How long do you think Breaker was in this match? Just trivia question. Fifteen. See that answer is perfect, right? Because you you're like, yeah, fifteen minutes. That he it felt like he was he was in there for a while. It felt like it. Wikipedia says he's in there for five minutes and 19 seconds. He made the most of those five minutes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Four eliminations. He was eliminated by Dirty Dom, right? Sneakily, kind of. But 
15 minutes felt like 15 minutes, but it was five. That's how impactful and how he delivered at like that star power, that aura, and that potential. It was really great work from the WWE here. Really great booking. He is definitely the highlight of this Royal Rumble. And and could you imagine after last night a Braun versus Roman match? I can see it. Like, yeah, that's that'd be so sure. fun. Yeah, and Breaker is one of those guys that they presented on NXT 2.0 as this is our guy as we tra- transition out of black and gold. He, he, we watched him find his footing, but we always see, saw what they see in him from an athletic standpoint. But he's a little, a little wonky with the character, you know, a little like, is he a baby? Like, I could see the baby face upside, but he felt like, like, like that Batista transition in like 05, where it's just like, yeah, he's the, he's now a baby face, but it's, he's kind of got like the deer in the headlights look a little bit as a baby face. But he's really sunk his teeth into his character once he turned heel here, but he hasn't really done anything. And then uh, I don't know how familiar you are with NXT, but he is in the Dusty Cup Finals with Baron Corbin, and uh, their tag team is really awesome. If they want to present that tag team on like a Raw or a SmackDown, coming off the Dusty Cup, and that's how you transition Braun Breaker to NXT uh, to the main roster off of this Royal Rumble performance, I think that would be a great transition. If they don't, I expect to see him on Raw the day after WrestleMania. For, hey, home run, you you. you that's the answer, right? If they don't yeah. do it my way, your your way is the absolute answer, a hundred percent. So yeah, uh, break it's Breaker's time, and he and he's his spot is kind of needed on that roster. It's a little bloated up top, not in a good, not in a bad way whatsoever. But you need that young, inspiring star to start extending up up the roster, and it's it's could be his spot for sure. Yeah, he's a baby Brock. Yeah, absolutely. Baby Goldberg, baby Brock, whatever, however you mm-hmm. want to look. He's he's baby Goldberg with Brock upside. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, almost spot. I thought that was perfect to kind of throw him in there right after Breaker r- ran rough shot. You know what I mean? Breaker ran rough shot and present almost as the new big threat. I thought that worked perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. Then McAfee. I feel like this was, if if Breaker got the Brock spot, I feel like uh, McAfee got the Brock entry <laughs> like it's like all right well we don't want to throw anyone in there and make them look like crap so let's kind of throw the pat in there it'll be fun it just didn't work it was terrible <laughs> no and, and it would have it would have been less offense offensive if we hadn't have had all those short eliminations earlier yeah one and done i'm okay with um uh, but we just had about a half dozen guys who just almost got no ring time and then we give mcafee who i like but we yeah, get him like, a spot and he doesn't do anything. He, you've had that big WrestleMania stage match. Um, you, you've wrestled in war games. You've been presented as a wrestler. Why are you mm-hmm. scared to get in there? You know, it's just, right. it, it was just nonsensical. It seemed like last minute. And I don't want to give him a pass, but it, it was probably the biggest negative on the show. But it was inconsequential. It was two seconds. So what yes. else? J- J.D. McDonough, I love it. He got the breaker spear. And I was like, oh, Santino spot right away. I saw, oh, Santino spot. Perfect. Uh, and... I like JD. Uh, I think his extend kind of into the judgment day is perfect. And I'm, I think he'll be, uh, he, he'll be, has a bright future, but I just think he's mostly a tag guy. Yes. He's a really good worker though. I think he's definitely has a slot on this roster. And then we had our truth 24 Miz at 25 priest at 26. So it's just kind of like that upper mid card, but with priest with upside. Yeah. And at this point I'm going, Oh, we're just putting everyone at the end that has a chance because we're, we're giving like six people in a row who they're either not that over or they get no ring time or they just, you know, absolutely, absolutely have no chance. So just the pacing going back to the women's match. I thought the pacing was great. The pacing on the men's match was just kind of, eh. uh, it was seesaw. It was high heights yeah. and, it, and it had second gear, you know, yeah. 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 CM Punk 27, Hogan spot, Big John Stud spot, Brett spot 27. Spot. Historically, yeah, historically is a is an awesome number to have, mm-hmm. uh, and I love that they kind of dusted that off for CM Punk. I love. I, I don't think CM Punk should have been 29, 28, 30. I think 27 was his ceiling of coming into this Royal Rumble. And then you know back to Chad. It's like all right, well we got Drew, and then what? You know, he kept being like, we got Chad Gable. I'm like, all right, I guess but we could bump. Chad Gable's a guy. I love Chad Gable, but Chad's a guy we could bump. Um, so then we got Ricochet. It's just like, it makes sense from like an athletic bump standpoint, but no chance, no chance, but 
that's that's just that's a weird one. But you know, kudos. Yeah. Historically, Ricochet still an upside in this company. So historically, him being in the Rumble at twenty eight. Yeah. There, there was a moment um, when I'm fantasy booking this Royal Rumble. There's a moment that I'm I'm playing out in my head, and it's Drew McIntyre in the ring, dominating, tossing people out. Five, four, three, two, one. Eh. Sami Zayn. Okay. And we got that moment, so I was we happy did, with that. We get the moment. Twenty nine, Drew. It's like, all right, Drew's twenty nine. We knew he was there, so it's like, all right, thirty's going to be a. Uh, 30 is going to be someone. Who is 30 going to be? You're like, we're going to hear a raindrop, a coin, excuse me, a coin drop. And I doubt it, but you never know. We're going to hear MJF's music. No, but hey, you never know, right? And then it's like Sammy Zane's like, oh, oh, okay, that's a good surprise. He was, he's been, that mm-hmm. makes sense. I love Sammy. Um, it's a good presentation of him as a star to return here. And I love his fire coming right back for Drew, coming for Drew, like you said. And I feel like that could be a mania match too. Yeah, uh, that's a perfectly great mid card mania match. And that would that would I think work well for both guys. So we kind of work through it. Ricochet is out twenty fourth. We work through the whole thing here. Then Priest is out. The final four of Drew, Cody, Gunther, Cody, and Pond. And those were the four quote unquote favorites in this match. Those are the four guys that they invested the TV time leading into this match. Um, of course you've kind of thought punk and Cody were the two guys, the two top tier favorites, and they did a really good job of mixing them of kind of adding doubt for Cody, but then adding doubt for punk, adding some reverence to Gunther, but then drew was like, well, you never know. Right. So there, these four final guys were presented as guys that absolutely could win the Royal rumble. Uh, the order of eliminations here, drew was fourth here and i love that punk was the one that got him i love that he was dominating punk and i love that he kind of caught punk and perhaps that could be they could it could come down to them perhaps in the chamber again so mm-hmm. we're adding to the next pay-per-view we're adding to a potential feud with them there is already sauce in the pan to kind of mix this mix this supper up a little bit so they're just adding to it and i thought drew looked good drew's a guy that they can rely on as a heel you know, perhaps if Cody were to win the Royal, to win the, the belt, uh, transition him to into a summer feud, coming off a fresh new contract. Uh, so Drew is in a pivotal point, an important, an important point, and in probably a pivotal WrestleMania match with Sammy. So they kept Drew strong. He looked good, but he did his job of going out fourth to last. And I really like this Drew McIntyre. This, and I've been telling friends of mine, I refer to this Drew McIntyre as Big Daddy Drew, because this is like 1996 Kevin Nash. Oh, yeah. And, and, and his run was kind of like 94, 95 Nash. <laughs> no, this, this is like day after Survivor yeah. Series. He drops the belt to Brett. He comes out on Raw. He's like, if you've got the black glove, I'm with you. If you don't, you know, go to hell. That's I, Drew McIntyre. That, that's perfect because his title reign was like 94, 95 WWF for the, yeah. during the pandemic. So yeah. that's, I love it. And they have, they have the same look. They have the same demeanor. Now, I don't know if he's as cool as Ke- Kevin Nash or as quick, but and I don't know if he has the fashion. Like he needs to get some FUBU shirts and some baggy jeans. W- we'll see. But I love the comparison. That's, that's, I'm probably going to steal that just so you know. But, but also I like his character because he's a villain who believes he's the hero. Right. Yeah. And yes, historically been the hero. So it works. It absolutely works. Um, I love the mix cat nap time for punk once he got rid of, you know, Drew. I love the mix of Cody and I love the mix of Gunther. Of course, Cody would go on to win, but mm-hmm. you were like, okay, so Cody's going to get the second to last elimination of Gunther again before punk wins, right? So it's like, all right, they're shining Cody up. This is right. really well. They're making Cody look good. He's he's about to pres- he's about to go finish his story. He's going to eliminate Gunther again, but then you got the new guy coming in, the much bigger, shinier star coming in from afar and he's going to come steal it from him after Cody's going through his cadence and his pace of previous Royal Rumbles. That big shiny star that they talked about in that promo is going to come and steal it. So I loved how they presented Cody and they kind of did the flip flop because in the past, if Cody Punk would have eliminated the guy at 28th, and Cody would have eliminated the guy at 27th, so Punk had a little bit of shine before he went out. I mm-hmm. love how they gave the shine to Cody 
before he eliminated Punk and he eliminated the two biggest threats and the two biggest stars of this Royal Rumble to go on and win it. And Gunther's a stud. Gunther should win the Royal Rumble. Another home run of a Royal Rumble performance from Gunther here. And um, he's probably the guy that I would have take off the belt in Cody whenever that would be. But I don't want to look too far ahead. Gunther is the future of this company for sure. I, I completely agree. Um, I did not think Cody was going to win this match. I did not think because there's so, many ways, yeah. there's so many ways to get to WrestleMania, right? Yep. So I figured the shiny new toy would win the Royal Rumble and the 10 year anniversary of him walking out. Um so what do you do with Cody? How do you eliminate Cody? Uh, they've done such a good job protecting him. They've yes. done such a good job with his presentation. He can't Absolutely. just he can't he couldn't just be eliminated. Nope. So I had this scenario, and there's one guy who I feel like should have been in this match. And if this guy had been in the match, I would have gotten closer to what I was I was picturing in my head. And that one guy is solo. Mm. Okay. Same concept, you know, we're going to put Jimmy in the match because Jimmy's going to go after Seth Rollins. Well, Jimmy gets eliminated, right? I could just imagine Paul Heyman backstage going, he didn't get the job done, so now it's your turn. And so Solo takes out, you know, JD or something and takes his spot, as they have done so many times before, so there's precedent for that. And Solo essentially gets kind of what they did with Braun, kind of. Mm -hmm. But he's like the, oh, my God, no one can stop him. And so Cody does. Cody dumps him. Solo pulls Cody out from under the ring, from under the, the bottom rope, right? And he puts him through the table. And as that's happening, Punk wins. Mm. So you've got an out. And then... Cody, yeah. Cody, Cody doesn't want to cry. Cody's not a crier, but whether it be Nick Aldis or whether it be Adam Pierce, Adam Pierce, um, they go this this right needs to be wrong. This wrong needs to be right. Uh, Cody, you're in the elimination chamber, and everyone else that Solo eliminated because Solo was not cleared for that match. You are in the elimination chamber, mm. and so then the guys like. Um, the guys that he screwed in the previous, the, the AJ, the LA Knight, the, the Orton, that's how you fill it too. So, yes. yeah, uh, that could have absolutely worked too. So but. you've, you've got, you've got Gunther who is absolutely a monster. You mean, that's like a future world title guy within yep. solo, same situation. Could have worked, should have, it could have worked, but we don't have to go down that path because we got we into don't. the, uh, we, don't. we got to the finish here and the upper mid card on Monday Night Raw is probably much more suited for a organic elimination chamber too, with all the guys. Look, the final six was fucking all Raw guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, the last SmackDown guy to enter the Royal Rumble was Austin Theory at number oh, thirteen. Wow. That so yeah, Austin Theory at number thirteen was the last SmackDown guy to enter. So there the was Royal some Rumble. thought put into this. Yes, so. So Monday Night Raw landscape is 100% presented for the Elimination Chamber. But what did you think of Cody versus Punk, that final five to seven, eight-minute stretch there down the road? I don't think it lived up to the Gunther hype, but I think it was pretty solid, and the drama was there. It's just like, you know how we talked about that second gear? They just didn't get into fifth gear. They were kind of stuck in third and fourth on that clutch. It, it was a fun attraction. I don't know if it was necessary. Oh, would you have gone someone different besides Punk in the final two? Not necessarily in the final two, but why does why why do that showdown? Why do the babyface babyface showdown when Punk's only been there two months and this is his first TV match? Well, I think it's kind of that, that trope that we talked about earlier, where the you know the runner up usually is the guy that is facing the other world champion right. at WrestleMania. Right. So maybe they went into that playbook here, presented Punk to the WWE universe. As a guy we haven't seen in 10 years, or believe it or not, or whatever. So, yeah, he almost won the Royal Rumble. So now when he goes to the chamber, yeah, you, he kind of lives up to the hype from a kayfabe in-ring standpoint where he went, he was in the Royal Rumble for 22 minutes, lasted, even though he kind of had a, a, a few dirt naps. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, uh, the the boy might not need to hit a little more cardio, as I'm a big CM Punk fan, of course, and uh, I don't want to you know dim on his light a little bit too much there. But you might want to hit a few cardio steps before you get into that WrestleMania main event with Seth Rollins, as you kind of look ahead there. But overall, what was your overall thoughts in this Royal Rumble match? Very happy with the outcome. And once it comes down to Punk and, and Rhodes, there's no downside, right? Yeah. They, they're the crowd's going to eat him up regardless. Uh, it's going to be a very happy ending. I thought that the outcome was great. Uh, the outcome was unexpected. I didn't think Cody would do back to back, but the match lopsided. Yeah, it. I thought it was the the peaks in the work was a little bit stronger than the women's, but the women's was probably more suspenseful, more um, yeah. booked, more of a oh cool, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I think it just kind of worked a little bit better. But this men's ceiling was much higher than that women's sealer ceiling. Um, I, like I think it was, I think they were both probably better than 2022s. I think they were both on par with last year's. P perhaps the women this year were better than last year, and the men's was better last year than this year. But um, overall, I think both worked for what it had to be, and the women's was probably due to kind of the water level coming in, probably more a little bit more successful. But the men's was just as good. I, I enjoyed them both pretty much. Nothing on this card was like all time, but overall I thought the card delivered. Here's one thing that that maybe would have added a little spice to the men's match. So the women's match, we had uh, Jordan Grace, nice little yep. outside talent. Could we have done something similar on the men's side? I think we got it with Andrade, uh, even though he's back in the WWE, perhaps. Uh, I think we had the – well, they had NXT. Well, like the representation um, from another company. Um, Perhaps, but I don't know if it – fits like if we go into impact we throw like i put josh alexander in there mm -hmm. um that like that works from impact does mm -hmm. moose work i don't know does moose work does like if we go like throw tommy dreamer in there does that work <laughs> say he's been on a he's no been on a, okay you, i didn't think so so it's or, like or even even like a big name from new japan for a one shot yeah, I, I don't know if those uh, those doors are open yet to steal a phrase, but um, would have been cool. Um, maybe if Okada's contracts a little earlier, and maybe if we can come to a, agreements a little earlier, if they come to agreements, that works. Um, but I don't know. I don't. I think that it worked. I think it was a home run in the women's part, but I think that's due to Jordan Grace in like the overall booking and the men's. I'm not sure where it would fall in, but overall, out of ten. What would you give the 2024 Royal Rumble as a whole? 7-5. Seven, 7-5. Five. Seven, five. Okay, so I, I was going to go 6-5-7. So we're on the same wavelength there. Mm -hmm. also, of course, you take out a lot of bloat of the video packages. You take out a lot of bloat of whatever. Um, the men's Royal Rumble the men's Royal Rumble match was an hour, eight minutes. The women's was an hour, five minutes. You had a 20-minute Roman match and a 14-minute Logan Paul match. So no all that adding there. up. It's about an hour in 15 minutes of fluff, of, but I don't care. Like I'm, I, I feel fine. like the fluff is much less than it used to be. Exactly. Um, I'm with my buddies. Um, I'm watching it. Um, you're texting with your buddies. I'm texting my other buddies. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in my seat for this four hours. I know I'm sitting in the seat for the four hours. I'm not going to let the little shit bother me. I never let the little shit bother me. Sometimes it gets a little annoyance, but no, that's all right. I can take my mind off this Royal Rumble and interact with my buddies, text my friends, whatever. So the in between, I know I'm locked in for 40 minutes. I'm sitting on this couch and I'm, I'm ready to go. So the in between stuff doesn't necessarily bother me no, uh, overall. And and the in between Good. stuff is is far less offensive than it used to be. I mean, they're not doing bad backstage skits with yeah. bad comedy and that kind of stuff. Oh, great! Or so weird good. sponsorships that are just kind of like shoehorned in. Yeah, sponsorships, like you said earlier, just work great here. So the yep. WWE's the WWE's in a really good spot. Uh, they didn't hit a home run, but they continue to kind of raise that Mendoza line. If I try to use a baseball reference here continuously up and they kept the water level high from a anticipation and a interest level for sure. And and I will say this, no matter how we grade the show is in overall, I'm happy with all the outcomes. Yeah. 
How often can we say that? Yeah, you're not wrong there for sure. All right, Graham, we're getting out of here. If anyone would want to find you, you want to give them a way to find you? Um, I used to do socials a lot. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> it's well, just we'll noise. Have- I'm, I'm a new dad. I'm too busy. I work full time. It's just noise. If you see me somewhere, say hi. I love it. Well, this was a historical event for sure. And I think that we have the best historian around to kind of come here and do it with us. And I would I'd love to dust you off and bring it back on one other time. Sure. Love to. All right. Well, Graham, this was fun as always. And we will catch you on the next one, buddy.